thank you, Sabya, for organizing this and uh, for the invitation. I'm uh, really glad to be hearing uh, all these speakers, uh, especially uh, the two excellencies, the State Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sharia Alam, as well as our High Commissioner, Mr. Dora Sami, and all the speakers. I think all of us at this panel agree that uh, the relations between Dhaka and New Delhi are really at an all-time high. Uh, the kind of unprecedented levels of cooperation that has taken place uh, in you know, spheres of security, energy, economic, and it's a whole gamut of wide range of activities. But I think more importantly, the way I see it, that you know, earlier that entire security narrative which used to dominate the bilateral relations has moved to the sideline. Uh, of course, certainly because of the kind of measures that Prime Minister Hasina took in uh, 2008 onwards. And the relation has now, uh, you know, enveloped a large, broad, cooperative framework. Uh, this, of course, has taken a decade of very significant work and effort by both sides. And I think uh, as we speak, the consolidation of that gain uh, that has happened over the decade is extremely important. And I think it's a, also, we understand it's a work in progress. Uh, but I think one factor which really jumps out is the connectivity uh, projects that has been initiated. And uh, even during pandemic times, I think uh, both the excellencies did refer to that and uh, you know, it, it, the work continued. Um, and I think as has been mentioned that people are core to these projects and initiatives. All about foreign policies are about involving people. Uh, but I think there is a certain gap here. I mean, somehow I think the people are not terribly convinced about some of the programs. And I say this because in the last couple of months, I've been on um, recent um, few programs, um, television in Bangladesh, talk shows, one of those in, you know, very popular talk shows which take place at eight and 10 and 11 in the evening. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the kind of questions that has come up. I've seen the kind of, you know, feedback uh, that's happened in continues even today though the program's predated on Facebook. Uh, there is a kind of, uh, and I think, I think there is a, dire need to have personal management in place. Uh, there is a certain significant section in Bangladesh who does not seem very endeared towards India. Uh, while we still understand there's you know, huge amount of work which has never been taken place between the two states has happened. Despite that, and I, I think as uh, research scholars, there are many factors one could attribute that, but this is of course not the space or the time to discuss all this. But for me, and the last few television programs have made me think a little bit more about these uh, issues. I think one particular issue that seems to be rankling uh, Bangladesh here is about the lack of cooperation on water. I think major misgivings surround that. Uh, I seriously, and I, I, I know the complexities involved, I know what the two governments are trying, but I think you know, the popular narrative, we've not been able to address that. And I think what we need to do sitting in 2020 to closing of 2020, we need to change that narrative of water flow during the lean season, uh, which is something that we've been constantly harping on. You know, right now, I think both the states are in a level of maturity in terms of the agro patterns to so discuss complementary IT patterns, cropping patterns. And it's not, I think it's very, very possible that on both sides, uh, you know, there's, a lot of investment going on on you know understanding how we can actually help each other and it's not only about just the water flow i think there's a much larger economy with it and i think that is not being discussed in the public forum and i'm sure if that is there's a more um, effort by institutes like us by research scholars like us to change that whole narrative about strict water flows and, and, and as, as you know the lean season is the issue it's not the rest of the time uh, and it, it's an emotional issue with Bangladesh. And, I, and I've always highlighted this, the core problem between the two countries, if I have to speak from the Bangladeshi point of view, it's always been water. And from Indian perspective, it's always been security. That's been addressed very uh, you know, adequately. So I, I know that a lot of misgivings actually uh, stem from that. And I don't, I don't understand why we're not addressing that and moving the narrative to a much more uh, positive framework. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. When I mentioned perception, I'm also very aware of the fact that while all of Bangladesh is very, very invested in Bangladesh in some way or other, uh, you know, every part of their life is somewhere intertwined, intertwined with uh, India. But I do not think the reverse is necessarily true. I mean, West Bengal, of course, is very, very closely connected with Bengal and, you know, we know the subsequent uh, consequences and developments that has taken place for it. Of course, Delhi, because that's where all the policies take place. And most of us, as you can see on the panel, are from 
you know, the think tanks of the institutes and, you know, we have a point of view which are able to flag. Uh, but I mean, the rest of India is really not, I mean, they have their own other, uh, you know, issues that they relate to. But the one region which is now, and I think this is also a, you know, continuation of the project, connectivity projects that are taking place. And this is, I think, started from the time the joint communique uh, was signed in 2010 is how the Northeast region has become so much closer to Bangladesh. This has been, you know, cited by every speaker almost. Uh, but I think the main core issue here is that the issue of migration remains a thorn. And I do not see why the two mature neighbors are not able to have a sensible conversation on this. Uh, if we, you know, India and Bangladesh over the last 10 years has touched upon whole gamut of ideas. But not this. And we know, of course, here specifically I mentioned Assam because which is the commercial hub in the region. Uh, and the kind of interaction, and we just heard about tourism and why we're not able to have, you know, boats and ships and other kind of things there, because there is somehow that communication gap again and a conversation which really needs to be done. And I think the kind of relationship that we both share now, if we can't do it now, we can't do it ever again. Uh, this is really the right time to have a very frank and open discussions. Uh, there are dichotomies on both sides. Let's not forget that. And I, when I talk about perception management, I also talk about how India needs to manage its perceptions. Bangladesh needs to manage that. And both together, there are many issues commonly they need to address. Uh, I mean, I would again harp on the fact that while the two governments are working so very closely, uh, unfortunately, I don't see the people connect that stronger. Uh, physical connectivity is definitely in place. I mean, all kinds of uh, river, road, air, all kinds of activities taking place, which has never been done before. But the emotional connect seems stifled. Uh, you know, between the two neighbors, large grand house projects are important, vision boards are important, but the ground connect is also more and more important. And I think we've heard about this bottom-up approach. Unfortunately, I don't think the people at the bottom feel that as yet. And I would actually argue that the stability of bilateral, uh, bilateral relations actually depend on people wanting to take it forward. It cannot be confined to specific political parties. It cannot be confined to elected governments. It has to be a much more broad-based uh, you know, uh, policies in place and a uh, broad-based relationship. The two other things that also, I mean, the pandemic, of course, has made us look at the relationship very, you know, through different prisms. And the two main uh, subjects I would say becomes important to share is education and public health. And I think that's something that collaboration, we've all for, of course known for years that uh, India has policies where Bangladeshi students would come, that continues, but I think the level has to be marked up. And earlier on, I, mean, I remember my generation of my friends in Bangladesh who would come to schools in India, that has not happened anywhere. At a higher level, yes, we still have ITEC programs where students are coming for, uh, higher education, but the kind of proximity that India and Bangladesh shared at a time when even political relations were not so good, simply because children grew up together. And I know many of these reunions, my family go to where a lot of Bangladeshi friends are also part of. That's a kind of relationship which seems to be missing now. And I think we need to revive that, examine why is that gap there. And uh, this brings me again, a factor which has been, I think, discussed again, but I, let me touch, touch upon that. Uh, is about building border communities. I think this is something that we've constantly discussed at ASCON. I've talked about it many. I think one of my, my book, which is out next in a few weeks' time, talks about this in greater de depth. As to how hearts, of course, have been a very successful initiative. There's no doubt about that. But there is so much more that needs to be done. A, in terms of, I know their plans, in terms of duplicating it. But I think we need to multiply them very many ways and you know i'm just not looking at heart in terms of the you know the agro products and the little limited products i'm looking at seeing how we are able to give services and again public health and education comes for me is a very critical component of that that the you know the rural borderland on both sides are very very similar and familiar they all lack the basic resources that the you know the mainland of both india and bangladesh have so if these border, the border hearts can be used as a core org, organ, organism to actually develop a border community and, you know, uh, you know, of course, there's been much written about it. But I think in terms of whether we're discussing public health, community, social hygiene, uh, many issues which somehow don't touch these areas need to be, you know, uh, thrown out through these uh, border uh, experiments. Again, um, I think one of the speakers talked about regional value chains. We've seen in the past, 
cut, um, you know, these products like Pran Company and others had tried. Uh, but I think the environment at that point of time was not suitable. The pandemic has actually shown us that we need to focus much more on regional value chains within the neighborhood. We've seen how many of us have been affected because we didn't have regional value chains. We had it with the external region, but not within our region. I'm, I'm looking at, you know, uh, uh, at, the, at the medical, at pharmacy, both Bangladesh and India, pharmaceuticals, again, a core uh, uh, strength. Uh, why is it that we can't, I mean, in terms of building syringes, in terms of, of course, now vaccine is being talked about, we would need some, you know, millions of syringes. And it's not possible for us, India, to overnight do, do that. It's possible that even in a short term, when these, I mean, these kind of... Uh, baselines are already there in Bangladesh. Why are we not having conversation uh, to, you know, increase our regional value chain in some of these core areas uh, that we could uh, uh, take forward? These are not long plans that we're looking at. The other issue, of course, I want to mention about how the borders can be a space for retail trade. We've, of course, talk, constantly talked about border huts. And I remember experience at Tama Vila, I think, where Sabi and I were together, where Bangladeshis would come on Indian side to buy from Big Bazaar and go out. It's a very daily real good affair. I do not see why we can't replicate that at every corner. Where whatever services is possible, I think retail trade, we've seen it happens in the US very effectively. It happens in the European conditions. And we already have, the, it, there, there's no formal structure as yet, but the actually, the you know, there's a kind of a momentum which is already being built. We just need to work from what is already there, multiply that. I think that's possible. I think a, a, a very traditional cross-border retail trade and, uh, you know, that establishes not only other issues of tourism and other things, but I'm saying they would be able to, uh, there's a backlog on both sides and that can be met, whether Bangladesh puts up products in terms of the kind of linen we buy, the kind of other handcrafts that we buy from Bangladesh in terms of crockery and other things, and similarly what India can provide in terms of uh, what we do. So let me just, I'm, uh, I think I'm probably uh, coming to my thing. And let me just you know, close in saying that there are, I mean, of course, many great ideas have been flagged. But again, while we keep talking about a bottoms approach, I think the last mile connection often has become an issue, standardization issues. And these are not new things that you're discussing today. The point here is that, you know, often a lot of projects are in place, maybe, but the implementation time takes, you know, is often, we keep missing the deadlines. Again, many of them has, as I said, I certainly see the kind of change that's happened in the landscape, which is unprecedented and something that we must be very proud of. Uh, but at the point I would like to say here mm -hmm. is that India and Bangladesh are really very, very important to each other. And for both, I think the core issue of people here, and we must understand that, you know, we have to address whatever misgivings are there on both sides. And it's time that we had these open and frank conversations. If we don't do it now, uh, we'll be really missing the woods for the trees. Thank you very much.